is Chesterton and Francis uh, reflecting on our current situation, and that is, of course, that we're all preoccupied by this uh, question of the, of the war on terror. And uh, you know, Chesterton uh, said something rather interesting about Francis and his desire to end the Crusades. Uh, and here, here's the passage. Um, uh, he begins, first of all, by talking about Islam, and he says this, uh, everybody knows uh, that in the very darkest hour of the dark ages, a sort of heresy had sprung up in Arabia and became a new religion of a military but nomadic sort, invoking the name of Muhammad. It seems to the heretic a sane simplification of religion, while it seems to the Catholic an insane simplification of religion, because it simplifies all to a single idea, and so loses the breadth and the balance of Catholicism. So he's talking about the insane simplification of heresy, uh, which loses the breadth and balance of Catholicism. And uh, of course, Francis, as we know, attempted to end the crusade uh, uh, and as Chesterton pointed out, uh, he wanted the Crusades to end in a double sense. First of all, to reach their conclusion, and then to achieve their purpose. Uh, that's what uh, Francis sought to do when he sought to end the Crusades. And uh, uh, here's what Chesterton says about that. And uh, maybe it's an appropriate little uh, passage on which to conclude our conversation and then uh, have some questions. It was in one way, this is Francis's attempt to end the Crusades, it was in one way a simple idea, as most of his ideas were simple ideas. But it was not a silly idea. There was a great deal to be said of it, and it might have succeeded. It was, of course, simply the idea that it is better to create Christians and to destroy Muslims, uh, which might be something to think about uh, in the next days, weeks, and years. So thank you all very much, and uh, now we will have conversation. said that, that uh, which claimed that the true author of this prayer was not definitely known. And since this conference on, uh, is on St. Francis, I was wondering if you would um, have the truth on, on, you know, is it really St. Francis? I mean, I, because the uh, truth, I do not know for certain. So I'd be glad to hear what you know. Well, um, the truth is that it is I believed not to have been written by St. Francis. Um, and uh, there are kind of little internal indications uh, that it might not have been written by St. Francis. Um, uh, Father, would you like to take that controversial question? Uh, but um, uh, most scholars, and of course we've spent the last few minutes uh, despising scholars and uh, people who go into the archives, but uh, the, the, the feeling is that um, uh, this is not actually uh, written by St. Francis. Yes, but aren't you, aren't, aren't you sounding a little bit like Paul Sabatier when you say that? I mean, does it really matter whether it was written by St. Francis? The real question is, is it Franciscan? Uh, and uh, if, if, if it is, 
uh, if it's in the spirit of St. Francis. Maybe I'm not sure that, it, it, that anyone writing something afterwards can ever match St. Francis, but uh, I don't know. It's familiar, and it, it, uh, it, it really is, rather, I think, a rather beautiful prayer. And it's, I think it's worthy, I think, this awful little machine. Uh, I think it's worthy, I think it's worthy of, uh, I think it's worthy of, I think it's worthy of him. Sister, did you want to make a point? If you will accept a legendary answer, I was at a, a conference about two weeks ago where it was explained, Francis did not write it. It comes way, way after him. And that during the beginning of World War I, there was a Frenchman who came upon this prayer and in a moment of order, sent it to the Pope because he thought it was a good idea to spread the said praying of this prayer. And the Pope said, they said, the, his people said, well, it has to have a picture. Who went and said this prayer? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Well, that that kind of reminds me a little bit of what you said about legend, right? Yes. Could you say a little bit more about that because that was very interesting. Uh, well, I, I I I think I I think it's I think it's uh, an idea Cheston was very fond of. I mean, he he thought, for example. Uh, that uh, the Christian truths were found in fairy tales. Um, and, and you find this in Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, uh, the idea that, yeah, and Chesterton in The Everlasting Man, uh, the whole idea of that book is that, yes, Christianity uh, is a myth, uh, but it happens to be a true myth. So it's the way in which uh, the dreams of the poets and the, the, the thoughts of the philosophers uh, were fulfilled with the coming of Christ. Uh, the dreams of redemption expressed um, mankind's desire for, uh, for, for redemption, expressed through the, the fairy tales with a happy ending. And uh, the, the, the philosophers who considered the puzzle, the puzzles of existence as an intellectual matter, so both mind and imagination uh, found their fulfillment uh, in, 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 the, in, in the incarnation. And uh, Chesterton believed uh, that uh, the deepest truths are told through products of the imagination, that stories are wiser than uh, uh, than, than treatises, philosophical treatises, because, as he explained, our, the human, human life itself is a story, and God is the storyteller, and uh, we should regard our lives as trust the storyteller to bring our lives, uh, you know, to the final chapter, to a happy ending, and that suffering is only the second last chapter. Uh, and. The sacramental idea is that every human life is a reenactment of the one gospel story, and that we find in, in the gospel the clue uh, to uh, the meaning of our own life. Uh, so Chesterton's notebook, which he wrote, as Dermot has referred to, his writings in the 1890s, uh, Maisie Ward devotes an entire chapter of her wonderful biography to Chesterton's uh, adolescent notebook. And in that notebook, Chesterton writes, uh, I like this storyteller. Uh, I like this storyteller. He's talking about God. Uh, so uh, yeah, legends and uh, stories uh, for Chesterton have a, have, a, have a profoundly religious significance. Uh, it's, it's uh, uh, he, he, he uh, uh, well, it's the sacramental idea. Remember his wife, Frances, 
um, who brought Chesterton, by the way, to Christianity. I mean, she, the devout Anglic Anglican, Anglo-Catholic, was practicing a religion. Chesterton said all the people he met talked about religion, but he came across someone who actually lived it when he fell in love with her. And, uh, but Francis didn't quite get the point either. Uh, when Chesterton began writing, Francis said to him, Gilbert, why don't you write about God? You know, he was writing about everything else. He was a great journalist. And Chesterton answered him, Francis, you don't understand. I never write about anything else. Uh, so uh, Chesterton doesn't, that's the whole sacramental idea. You don't talk religion. It's not religious language, but it's teaching people to find God in a world from which God seems to be absent. Uh, how in the simple material, the profane side of life, or what seems to be profane, Chesterton reveals as, 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 as being sacred. And uh, I, that's why I, th I think that's the attraction of Chesterton, and perhaps of Francis too. Uh, their humanity, and uh, they, they, they bring to people to God in that, in that, in that way. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. 